Praise to be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most gracious, the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاءُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاءُكُمْ He says, قُلْ يَا مُحَمَّدْ صَلَاةُ رَبِّهُ وَسَلَامُ عَلَيْهِ Say, O Muhammad, إِنْ كَانَ آبَاءُكُمْ If your parents وَأَبْنَاءُكُمْ and your children وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ and your siblings وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ and your spouses وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ and your extended family وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا and wealth that you have acquired وَتِجَارَةً and business and connections and trade تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَةً that you are fearing that it will decline وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا and homes that you cherish if you love those أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ you love them more than Allah وَرَسُولِهِ and his prophet وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِ and struggling in the way of Allah فَتَرَبَّسُ then you wait حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِ until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings his will then wait and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide the rebellious إِخْوَةِ فِي اللَّهِ Today we are asking ourselves, why this weakness? What is happening to the Ummah? 1.8 billion Muslims, but nothing. No financial power, no any power, no anything. We are the weakest of the nations. Why this weakness? Isn't this, this the right religion? Are we not Muslims? Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Don't be weak. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Don't be sad. وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنِ You are the highest. إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you are believers. Isn't this the religion of Allah? Isn't this the religion of Adam? The religion of Jesus? The religion of Moses? The religion of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then why are we weak? That's the question. Children are being killed today in Gaza. Daylight bombarded. Babies in the ICU are being killed. Daylight. But we are weak, we can't do anything. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the answer in one ayah, in one verse. He says, Qul in kana aba'ukum. If you are obeying your parents more than Allah, and you love them more than Allah, you love whatever they tell you, which is against Islam. You love your children, because you are securing your, their future. You love them more, and you love them more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet, because you're thinking about them. You're working hard. You're making all these connections for your children. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ Your wives, your husbands, if you love them more than Allah, your parents, your extended family, they tell you divorce. We don't want this family. They are not in our class. I want you to divorce her. And then you divorce her without anything. It's because you're fearing your parents. You're fearing your family. You love your family more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wait. إِخْوَةِ فِي اللَّهِ This weakness today we are facing is because we love this dunya. We love these things which are going to end tomorrow. We put them in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet. And Allah says it's very clear. فَتَرَبَّصُ Wait. You will see the results. The result is that way is a closed way. It's an end. You will never succeed in this world. You will never be the powerful. You will never prepare yourself financially, economically, politically, militarily. You will never. Because your love, your priority is something which is ending. We have to change our mindset. What is the purpose? Why are we here to work? We go in the morning and we work for the whole day, for the whole month. 
And after 60 years, what happens? After 70 years, what happens? Everything is done. You're no longer among the priorities. No one talks to you. What is your legacy? In building buildings, castles? In building an empire of business? Naam, it's good for the ummah. But what's your legacy? What's your future, ikhwati fillah? What's our future? Our future is al-akhirah. We have to be akhirah oriented. And whenever we succeed in akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us even dunya. Man kana yuridu thawab dunya If you are looking for a dunya, if you're striving for a dunya, fa'inda Allahi thawab dunya wal akhirah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a dunya and akhirah. Both of them. لذلك إخوتي في الله the strength in this world is attained by selling our souls and our wealth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Loving them more than anything. And the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the love of your brother, your sister in Islam. Is to stand al-Muslim, akhul Muslim, we are brothers. Regardless of our race, of our color, of anything. We are one. And this world was created for who? For us human beings. For who? For those who follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we don't change this mindset, we will be weak in all aspects of life. And that's what ha what's happening today. A dunya comes first. When we go out of the masjid, we go in a dunya. Our transactions, are they haram or halal? Our relationships, are they haram or halal? Whatever we are doing, is it haram or halal? Everyone should point at himself. How am I going to save the ummah? A young man will question me and say, what do you want me to do? If you, f you work hard for the ummah, and I work hard for the ummah, and Abdullah works hard for the ummah, we are families, we are community, and after that community strengthens, another community strengthens. And that is how the strength of the ummah is built. But today, leaders of Muslims, whatever, in all countries are quiet because they are weak. Because of their positions. Everyone is securing his position. A position Allah gave him. Everyone is securing his connections. A connection Allah gave him. Everyone is looking at his children and saying, if I talk today against this, that they will try or they will do this to me. Everyone is fearing. For what? For a dunya. But our children and our women are being killed daylight without raising a finger. And that is the weakness. We want to overcome it. We should reverse the ayah. Allah and his prophet should be loved. Wa jihad in fi sabil is struggling the way. When we hear jihad, most of us fear. Oh, they will call me a jihadist. They will call me an extremist. Jihad, fighting is only a fraction of jihad, of struggling in the way of Allah. Teaching your children Islam and taking them to an Islamic school, authenticated Islamic school, raising them in an Islamic way is jihad, is struggling. Talking to your wife, telling her about hijab and being a modest wife is jihad. Talking to your husband and telling him to abstain from all habits and bad habits is jihad. Coming to the mosque to pray on Jum'ah and leave all at dunya is jihad of Fisabili. Jihad is not only fighting. Fighting is a small fraction. There is jihad on nafs. How can we abstain from evil? How, how can we work for the ummah? How, how can we have a heart which is wide for the ummah, for the brothers? La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li'akhihi 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 ma yuhibbu al-nafsi we will not be good believers until we love for our brothers, for our sisters, what we love for each other. And that is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar radiallahu anhu, the friend of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the days in the morning after praying Fajr, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya Umar, kayfa asbahat? Good morning, Umar. Did you sleep well? And he says, yes, I slept well. And I woke up loving you more than anything, except my soul, except my nafs. Oh, Prophet, I love you more than anything else, more than my children, more than anything, except myself. He said, you have not yet reached the Umar. Then he said, Umar, 
Oh, my beloved prophet, I love you now more than my soul. It means his soul, his soul to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sold his soul to Allah and Prophet Muhammad sallam. Even if he is going to be killed, even if whatever happens to him, he is of Allah and he is of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is the ayah which says, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ O Prophet, tell them, say, إِنَّ صَلَاتِ My prayers, وَنُسُكِ My sacrifices, وَمَحْيَايَ My life, وَمَمَاتِ My death, is lillahi rabbil alam is for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you sell to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything he gives you everything he is the provider when you give him your soul and you do whatever you are doing for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he returns the favor because he is a shakur a shakir he returns the favor and gives you whatever you want that's why he says man kana yuridu thawab ad-dunya if you want this dunya, these small transactions, your goal is to have $10 million. Your goal is to have $1 million. If that is what you're looking for, that small amount, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has thawab dunya The reward of a dunya and al akhirah it's limitless. It has no boundaries in everything. Health, money, wealth, whatever you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you. But are you ready to sacrifice? Are you ready to sacrifice your soul to see that you want to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then if you are ready, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you whatever you want. Ikhwati fillah, time is limited in al Jum'ah. But the concept is that what is our legacy in Africa, in Uganda, wherever we are, how are we going to help Islam? How are we going to propagate Islam? Islam is not something which is contradictory to humanity. If people knew today, if non-Muslims knew the goodness, the beauty of Islam, how Islam protects people, how Islam governs, they will come and all say, please govern us with Islamic Sharia. Govern us with Islamic teachings. Please be our leaders. But are we good leaders? Are we an example? Your co-worker at work, he looks at you, you are his manager, his, uh, his boss, his supervisor. Are you a good Muslim? Are you a Muslim who loves for his brother, for others, what they love for themselves? Are you kind to them? You call them and you tell them, why don't you become a Muslim? And someone is looking at you, he's looking at your actions and say, if you're calling me to your religion, I'm not ready to enter that religion. Because your actions are not Islamic. We are Muslims by name, but our actions, are they Islamic? Are other people, do they admire us when they see us? Are we followers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu We all love everyone who say, I love Allah, I love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But there is a test here, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, قُلْ O Muhammad, tell them, Salawat Rabbi Sallam Alaihi إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ الله. If you love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي, follow me. The love of Allah is measured, is measured by following Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. كل يدعي. Everyone say, I love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I love Allah. But are you following the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa taala? May Allah guide us all. May Allah grant us tawfiq ikhwati fillah, and make us among those who work for the ummah, who work for others, who work for this ummah and strive for it that we see Islam in everywhere, and that will help us in every way in our character, in our homes, in our businesses, in our communities. Barakallahu feekum.